And the beginning of the, the gospel story begins with a wonderful message of a baby is coming. And uh, that's the, the good news, a baby is coming. And no, that's not a personal announcement. Uh, I've, I've had the joy of making that announcement eight different times uh, to tell my family and to tell friends, good news, a baby is coming. But uh, that's not a personal announcement. That's just the title of the message today. So the gospel is good news. The gospel means good news. And, uh, you know, it's no wonder that God would begin uh, two of the gospel accounts, Matthew and Luke, with, the, you know, that message that uh, there is going to be a child to come. Now, that is a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. And, it, you know, it seems like it doesn't fit, but in Isaiah chapter 7, uh, there was a prophecy uh, to King Ahaz. And, uh, you know, King Ahaz was a wicked king. And, uh, you know, God told Ahaz, you know, ask me for a sign and I'll show you one. And, uh, and he said, no, no, I'm not going to ask, you know, I'm not going to ask for a sign. I, and, and so anyway... Um, the Lord himself would give a sign in Isaiah 7 verse 14 the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel okay and God with us and so uh, that prophecy hundreds of years before the coming of Christ was fulfilled uh, in the Gospels. And so anyway, that's the good news. The Gospel is good news and here comes uh, a child. Here comes the Son of God. And uh, the birth of a child is good news. And uh, you know, uh, the situation surrounding you know, every birth is maybe not good. Sometimes uh, people uh, in the older generation, they talk about being born uh, you know, at times of war or being born, you know, I, I, I know my mom uh, you know, she's, I was born in, in uh, well, I don't want to give away how old she is, but, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, we're, we, we uh, think that the time in which we're born or the time in which we live is, uh, uh, you know, it may be the best of times or the worst of times. But anyway, uh, situations surrounding the birth of the child may not always be favorable but you know a, a child is one of the most wonderful blessings that God allows us as human beings to enjoy and uh, to, to be a parent and to have children is, is a blessing from the Lord and uh, God says the fruit of the womb is his reward well God wants us to know that he favors the little ones and God he favors children and he uh, he, he blesses them and loves them and Jesus uh, you know he he loved uh, all the, the little children that were brought unto him he would bless them and and uh, it you know it was uh, and is God's uh, nature as uh, a father and, uh, and you know in, in Isaiah chapter 9 he says he's going to be the everlasting father and uh, you know Jesus he is uh, he is uh, that embodiment of God the father and so 
so anyway what we see here in the Gospels is that uh, it's not by natural means that Jesus comes into the world it's a miracle and uh, miracles are from God and God is the miracle he's the miracle maker I mean he is the miracle working God life is a miracle and uh, you know in him in Jesus is light and is life and he is the light and life of men and, and of all mankind and so just life is a it's a miracle and how God uh, you know God allows the essential um, for us to have a Savior. Uh, if Jesus was not born of a virgin, if he had a human father, we would not have a Savior. Jesus would be like any other man. Jesus would have been a sinner, and he could not be our Savior. But Jesus, uh, he was uh, born of a virgin. He, he, as we say, God, his heavenly Father, or God the Father, but uh, Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. So in no wise at all, in no case at all, was Jesus conceived by natural means. It was a product of a miracle, the Holy Spirit. As it says in Luke, the, the Holy Spirit came upon her. And uh, the power of the Most High overshadowed her. And so that's, uh, that's what happened. And so God... Uh, all of who God is uh, became you know, in, in, enveloped in flesh. And at the very beginning, we're talking about one cell. <laughs> it, that's, that's hard to wrap my mind around. It's hard to fathom that, that God would uh, humble himself. But he did. In Philippians chapter 2, it tells us that, that Jesus, he is God and he is exalted and and he humbled himself and he became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And, and so he humbled himself, came from the realms of glory and uh, to the humble existence of a man. Came into this world as, as all men do. He was, not, he was not conceived in the same manner, but he was born in the same manner. In fact, he was born in a stable. He was born in a barn, <laughs> and uh, he was laid in a feeding trough, a manger, and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He's wrapped in the, the poor garments that uh, they would use to wrap up dead people, and uh, you know that that's where he was. That's what he came into, into this world, and that, you know, when it says that he, he made the world and the world uh, knew him not, he came into his own and his own received him not it's amazing that God would do that it's amazing how God he would weave <coughs> mankind he would weave men uh, into his plan of redemption and it, it's when I say that I'm not saying that any man or woman had any uh, active role in redemption but God would lay the foundation and God would lay the groundwork for redemption for the bringing his son into the world he would do that through sinful people and just looking at the genealogies of Christ there's a lot of scumbags in the genealogies of Christ uh, in, you know in Luke and in Matthew and uh, you know I, when 
I say scumbags, you know, I, I do that with the most utmost respect that I can because uh, there were some really terrible people, even though they were kings and, you know, some of the people that are listed there, you know, we can say, well, they were patriarchs and, and uh, they, they do have a testimony of faith. Uh, many of them do, but, uh, you know, they were sinners. They were sinners and uh, we're not any better than they were and they're not any better than we are. But, um, you know, God, God, he tells the truth about people. That's how we can know that the Bible is true. God does, um, it wasn't written by a man. <laughs> the Bible was not, you know, written out of the mind of a man, okay? It, it was written from the mind of God. And, uh, you know, God tells the truth on people and exposes them. And, you know, think about our he heroes, uh, you know, David. Uh, he, he, he was a man of faith and a man after God's own heart, but he was very flawed and he was a sinner. And, and I can relate, you know, to, to David as, as somebody who had to come constantly to God asking for forgiveness. And, and uh, so anyway, uh, it's just truly amazing how God would do that, how, how God would weave people into redemption's plan that, that were not perfect and uh, you know they didn't even know the role that they were playing and, and, and but God uh, God had a place for them and uh, you know God he would not just drop his his only begotten into the world into uh, you know unprotected hands he would prepare people and uh, I want to talk about uh, two people that that God had prepared and used um, in bringing his son into the world and that is Mary and Joseph and so Mary she was a uh, you know she, as the Bible describes she was a young virgin she was uh, you know she's the tribe of Judah she's living in Nazareth she's living in northern Israel in a, uh, in a very impoverished place a, a, just a small town in northern Israel and, uh, but she has a genealogy that's traceable back to David, and uh, you find that in the book of Luke, and, and uh, so her uh, ancestry goes back to David, not through, the, not through any kings, because David had a son whose name was Nathan, and, uh, and so Nathan, uh, of course, had uh, generations uh, to follow after him, and they were not kings, but they were of the king's household, and, but anyway... They went to, into exile, and they uh, that family came out of exile, and and uh, I'm sure they they wanted no claim unto the throne or uh, anything like that. And so they, they went into seclusion, and they went into obscurity, into a little place called Nazareth. And so, uh, you know, even though they wanted not to be known, God knew who they were. Think about that. They probably didn't want anybody to know who they were, especially the Romans. <laughs> example for young ladies uh, to have an awesome example for women uh, to have is you know she, she wasn't questioning God she didn't want to uh, she, she didn't she didn't want to know all the all the details she just said you know behold the handmaid of the Lord and and uh, just surrender and um, that, that's a, a great a great example and uh, and and so the other example that we see here is in Joseph and Joseph, he was also, a, a, he was a young man, and, uh, you know, we don't know exactly how old Joseph was. I, I've seen depictions of Joseph being young. There's also been depictions of, uh, of Joseph being old. Uh, I don't think so. I think Joseph was probably a young man as well, and, and uh, he was as well descended from the line of kings who, um, by their sins, uh, you know, the sins of his fathers, Judah, followed after the northern tribes of Israel into exile. They were conquered by Babylon 
and uh, they continued in exile through the you know medial Persian Empire and then they were allowed to go uh, back and reestablish themselves and one of Joseph's ancestors Zerubbabel uh, was a king of sorts uh, over uh, the returning of uh, you know, Judah that he was more like a governor but but uh, anyway uh, Joseph was in the line of the kings as well but I, you know at, at this time I suppose that Joseph had no desire to, to step up and, and be in that uh, make any type of claim of course the Bible prophesied that there would be no uh, one to set on the throne as far as uh, a, a descendant of uh, Jeconiah, that's a whole other story. But anyway, um, you know, Joseph, he was a, he was a carpenter, and, uh, you know, he was poor, and, and Mary was poor, and he, you know, he was, he was again, living in Nazareth in a little place there. But, uh, you know, I think what we see from Joseph is he had a desire to um, serve God, love God, live for God, raise his family for God and do things right and uh, just just live for the Lord and um, and so that's 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 where we come to in, in Mark or Luke chapter number sorry Matthew chapter number one verse number 19 uh, Matthew number one and uh, verse number 19 we're introduced here to, to uh, Joseph and uh, well let's start verse 18 now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, that's kind of like saying engaged, being engaged to Joseph, uh, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And um, that created some problems here, and that creates the narrative of the story. It says, Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, uh, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So we're talking about Joseph, and what kind of man was he? And, uh, you know, I want to try to see some good examples, uh, good examples for young men. Uh, out there today good examples for men in general today what uh, you know we we don't have a lot of good examples in our day and time of what a man is supposed to be uh, don't don't look into the world of politicians to find good examples of what it is to be an honest and an upstanding man there may be some honest and upstanding men in politics today but they're very few and far between uh, you know, sadly today, uh, it's it's hard to find uh, men who are faithful and, and, and righteous and and holy. And uh, it, but if you look into you know the church, you look into uh, the you know lives of, of godly people, you'll you know, you'll find that. But as far as in this world today, uh, it's very depraved. Our, our world is very depraved. But uh, you know, in Joseph's uh, day and time, I imagine. It was the same thing. He was probably a rare, uh, he was a rare find. He was probably a rare catch in his day. And, uh, and so he, 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 was, uh, he was a man who was godly. And the Bible describes him as being a just man. And, uh, and so anyway, I want to look at several attributes of Joseph's life. First of all, here we see that Joseph, he was righteous. And uh, the, the term here that God attributes him with, he says he was just. And uh, that's a term that was given to Lot. That was a term that was given to Abraham and David. And, uh, you know, that, that is that he was a righteous man. And uh, not with his own righteousness, but he was righteous through the righteousness of God. He, he was trusting in the Lord for, for God's righteousness. And um, he lived his life after that. You know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't lip service or, it was, you know, it wasn't just uh, something he said that he was righteous. He lived righteously and followed after that. But as we see here, it says uh, that she was found with child. This is after they were engaged and their engagement was more like marriage. Uh, in fact, it calls it uh, him 
uh, Joseph, her husband. So um, they were married, but they were not yet living together, and they had not yet come together physically as husband and wife. So it says he was righteous. And uh, because of that, he said he was a just man, not willing to make her a public example. And and one thing that uh, we see here is because he was righteous, he did not just accept her sin, okay? He did not, you know, just say, well, now she had not sinned, understand that, but him supposing that she had, uh, supposing that there was something, uh, you know, some wrong uh, done, um, you know, he, he did not excuse it, um, but, and, and he did not accept it. But we see that because he was righteous, he also had compassion. So he was balanced in that. And God is, God is always balanced as well. And so if we will follow the Lord and we will, uh, you know, live the way God wants us to live, you know, we will live a balanced life. And uh, there is a way where righteousness and, and justice can uh, work together. And that you know, is mercy. And he was merciful. He had compassion. He did not publicly expose Mary, even though he supposed that there was wrongdoing. Um, it says that he was minded to put her away privately. And uh, according to the law of Moses, if she had, you know, been with child of you know another man and uh, that would have been considered adultery uh, she could have been stoned and that's what he was thinking he did not know and so he was supposing there was wrong done here but he would not he still loved her and uh, he he wanted to uh, do what was right even though he hated the sin that he thought was there he still loved her and, uh, you know, another thing we see, he wasn't quick to judgment. He wasn't quick to anger. And just there, again, showing that uh, righteousness in his life. You know, if there's one thing that we need, men, in our, our lives today. We need righteousness. We need to be righteous before God. And uh, you, can't, you can't live a righteous life unless you have the righteousness of God in your life. That means you have to be saved. You have to be born again. And you, you have to be justified uh, through God. And uh, so Joseph, he, uh, he showed compassion because uh, he was righteous there. Um, he showed forgiveness. He showed forgiveness here. And uh, he was minded to put her away privately. And, and in verse number 20, it says, but while he thought on these things, you know, he didn't, he didn't just uh, dismiss it quickly. He was thinking on these things and and uh, he, uh, you know, he was, I, I'm, I can't say exactly what he was thinking about, but I'm sure forgiveness uh, crossed his mind. And, uh, and so even when he seemed to have been betrayed, he refused to uh, take vengeance and revenge. And so, you know, this was something that was very real unto him. And so it says, he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And, uh, you know, he, he receives this message from the angel of God, and, uh, and, and he, uh, accepts, he accepts that and, you know, doesn't question it. And he obeys. He obeys. He's not arguing at all. I mean, I imagine he was overjoyed to know that uh, there was there was no sin involved here, and that his wife was uh, faithful to him and his wife to be. And man, I bet jo Joseph was happy, and uh, and and so he was glad to obey and do exactly what uh, was commanded of him. In verse 21, she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know, this wasn't just a personal uh, thing. It, it, he was talking about his Savior, the one who he was trusting in. And so what a awesome thing that uh, God was putting on Joseph right here, and uh, but also entrusting him, him with as well. So Joseph did exactly what uh, the Lord had commanded or instructed him to do in every way. Verse number 22, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which 
It's being interpreted as God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the Lord, angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. You know, Joseph, he, he showed faith in believing what God had said. He, he obeyed without question in every aspect of it. And he also showed temperance, you know, self-control. He, he refrained. She's his wife. He refrained from, as it says here, knowing her uh, as a husband and wife physically do. And uh, he refrained from that. And, uh, and so Joseph, he, he's just embodying uh, the, 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 you know, working of God in his life. And he was just a regular guy. He was just a regular man. Joseph, he's, you know, he, there's nothing special uh, about him except for what God was able to do through him. And so I say to you, men, that uh, and and ladies, that these are some awesome examples that I think we we can look for and look at and say, I want to be like that. I want to be uh, in my life uh, like like Joseph, like this man. He was faithful. He was righteous, and uh, he he honored God and he loved and he. Uh, obeyed the Lord and he had faith and all of these things and so you know uh, there's a lot of uh, outside uh, influence and a lot of other players in this gospel story and we're really going to focus on Jesus more than anything but I, I think it's fitting that we see here that God would use um, other human beings he'd use other men in accomplishing his mission of reaching this world with uh, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so God bless you until next time.